basketball game in about five weeks. And on top of Duke at the moment, here at Castle Coliseum. Here's Couture as he gets going again. Just made a three a moment ago. And Duke dodging a bullet with that possession, miscommunication defensively, giving Hunter Couture a wide open look. Just unable to knock it down. Duke has missed their last four shots. Roach trying to put an end to that. Here's Proctor. Can't hit the three. And Duke has gone cold here. Inside the five minute mark, almost four minutes to go. And Padula will take his time and set it up now for Mike Young. And they'll run some motion. Here's Collins. Rebound comes out high. Duke wants to run. It's Filipowski ahead of everybody again. And a blocking foul. That'll go on Collins. Trying to stop the big fella. Hokies, a special time for these Hokies a year ago. So they know they can do it. They've dug themselves a hole this year, too. Filipowski making number one. Last year they were two and seven. They beat FSU on the road. That turned everything for them. Now they're one and seven. Will tonight be the night where they flip the switch? And two for the big. Who continues to have a great night. He's 28. And that ties his career high, the freshman. Duke coming out with some full court pressure to see if they can speed up the Hokies quite a bit. And Obi, as we get further into this game, I got to make sure that we say a happy College Sports Communicators annual membership appreciation week. So we make send a shout out to all the sports information directors throughout the ACC that make this game so great for us. And a special birthday shout out. Yeah, to Mike DeGeorge, who is the great guy at SID for the Duke Blue Devils for the basketball team. Mike. Turning, I think he said 23 today. <laughs> With maybe the maybe the uh, 21st anniversary of his 23rd birthday. He's There's our guy, Mike. Outstanding. Does a great, <laughs> great job. Our best to Mike. And a happy birthday. Filipowski on the drive, and it's blocked by Bazilli. Great timing there, and he gets it back too. And Derek Lively getting his hands on the basketball, but there are small things. That's one you've got to be able to corral and maintain that possession for your team. 72 69 Bazilli down the lane fouled before the slam so no basket as he was held up 306 left so Bazilli to the line and coming up next on ESPN we take it away go for 17 Baylor squaring off against number nine Kansas with Boog Shambi and Jay Billis. Boog. We and Boog get together and talk about baseball. Uh, we've been known to. You have no, been known just to. Just a little bit. We go back a long, long way to our Marlins days. You know, Boog actually introduced me to Coach Ross. Well, David Ross, we flew back together from Tallahassee. Uh, Coach Ross is actually a Knowles fan, believe it or not. Spend some time in Tallahassee in the offseason. We had him in Boston. He did a great job for us catching. That's before he was a manager. He's done a pretty good job there, too. Here's Proctor outside the three. Now inside. Under three minutes to go. Roach. Proctor again. Shot clock at five. Proctor with the kick. Young the other side of the rim for two. And great recognition by Young. He's not the athlete that Basili is. So he used the other side of the basket, the reverse layup, to get the short two. A big bucket for Ryan Young. So it's a big hoops tonight. He has eight. Basili slapped away by Filipowski. Great work there, but it's going to be a blocking foul. As Roach did a terrific job to keep that alive and keep the basketball from going out of play. And it was a smart play by Padula to try to get the charge of that possession. But I do think this was the right call. You have to be able to give someone an opportunity to change direction. And right there, you see Jeremy Roach did not have that opportunity as Ryan Young continues to work for the basketball and finds the right position, but avoids the shot blocking of Bazzilli by using the opposite side of the rim. Got a timeout here as Roach went to the line for a one and one. And now his team with an opportunity to make it a one point game at the free throw line. Roach at the line. 
And missed the front end. Duke usually very reliable at the line. Jeremy's sister not happy with the free throw miss right there. Encouraging Big Bro. Approaching the two minute mark. Mutz doubled up. Eight to get off a shot. Mutz on the move to the lane. Basile came up with it but misfired underneath. Duke has missed their last six threes. Filipowski going in close. Went for the bank shot, drew the foul. Well, you know, you're talking about the parents and how they watch every single move. It's an emotional roller coaster for parents throughout this game. You see Carol getting down in her own defensive stance, watching Jeremy go to the basket. Car Carol's been doing that since he was two. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Filipowski off the front iron. Duke missing their shot. 78% at the line as a team, but suddenly the free throws are not going. Made the second. And once again, Kyle Filipowski denies this castle guard. The crowd here at Castle Coliseum bacon. Duke gate out of 12 at the line. Vizzilli. Minute 10 to go. Vizzilli spin. Here's Collins on the baseline. Collins is much and draws the foul. Great recognition by Butts to cut to the basket. Seeing that Collins could be in trouble, but in comparison to standing along the three-point line, he dives to the basket. Vizzilli finds Collins cutting, but you see surrounded by three Blue Devils. And Justin Mutz, a great job cutting to the rim, getting the opportunity and getting to the free throw line. Mitchell's second personal. This has not been a strong suit for the senior from New Jersey, just 67%. And has not made one tonight. And 0 for 4, and these, of course, are huge free throws. You want to try to make it a multiple possession game, but with missing the first one, that wouldn't happen. Right now, you can get it to three. 75-72. And a timeout, John Shire. Just over a minute to play. And Duke started out as hot as a firecracker in a 7-0 lead. Virginia Tech came back just as strong. And so here we're coming right down to the bitter end with a minute or two to go. And right now, no need to rush a three-point shot. You have more than enough time, a minute to remain. You want to get the best quality look you can. Probably attacking the basket. Find a way to make something positive happen in the painted area, whether it's a layup or kicking it out to one of your guys for three. But no need to rush right now for the Blue Devils. 75-72. Mazzilli's been a big reason that Virginia Tech has been able to have this late lead, the Kings of Castle so far. And of course, Filipowski's just been outstanding with 29 points and nine rebounds. Yeah, career high 29 points with Kyle Filipowski. Stepping it up big time here on the road, recognizing how much his team needs him and has answered the bell each and every time for the Blue Devils. We look at our game reset right now. Still two timeouts remaining for Virginia Tech, only one for the Blue Devils. Both teams in the bonus, and the Blue Devils right now looking to get some points on the board to either tie or make this a one-point one game. Now, both of these teams coming off games that came down to the last shot on Saturday. Duke put a big win over Miami at home. Virginia Tech lost by one point against Clemson. Roach down to 47 seconds to go. 10 to get off a shot. They want Filipowski to take one, but he can't. Proctor will. He drains a triple, and he ties the game. But a shot within the flow of the offense 
All dribble penetration. Filipowski, we've talked about him being able to make plays off the bounce, but has the poise and presence of mind not to take a bad shot. And Tyrese Proctor, we've talked about him growing up in the moment and finds his teammate as Proctor steps up, make a big three to tie the game as the brotherhood. Without a field goal in the last five minutes and 25 seconds, the Blue Devils have been locking them up defensively. And right into a 75-75 tie. Hokies 10 out of 19 from three-point land though tonight. Here's Bazzilli. 20 seconds to go. Handoff for Couture. Couture with a bounce speed. Here's Collins. Collins with a pull up. Got it! With 13 seconds to go. And they're going to have to maybe look at the clock here as well. 12.4 to go. Filipowski taking a hit. Looks like in the throat area. Also got what looks to be blood on the knee. It's been that type of night for Kyle Filipowski. He's played great. But he's been beat up also. We've seen him on the ground a number of times throughout this one. You see the blood on the knee. MJ Collins making the two point basket and a fist pump that accidentally catches Kyle Filipowski in the neck. Oh, on the celebration. Didn't know this in this game. Officials checking the clock, make sure they got it right. 3.9 remaining, and Duke still has a timeout. Collins, an 80% foul shooter. Freshman from South Carolina. Pretty smooth on that one, just like his jumper. And that is a big free throw, because now the most that Duke can do is tie the basketball game and send it into overtime if they are able to knock down the three. This one right here can be the dagger. Collins, a four-star recruit, one of the top players coming out of South Carolina. And looking to put the Hokies on top by four. And he does not. And a timeout. Filipowski with a rebound, 3.2 to go. Couture runs in and pushes Kidd to the bench. <laughs> and Hunter Couture covers some ground. Six Hokies on the floor coming out of the timeout. Hunter Couture sprinting over. That's leadership right there, OB. So nobody on Young as he inbounds. Gets it and knocked away. Couture at the theft. And they win it. 78-75. Couture had a huge hand in it. And he had the biggest hand in the 